Hi everyone, my name's Connor McDonald. Welcome to the KISS series, the Keeping It Simple with SQL, focusing on partitioning. Each of these sessions are quick introductory sessions into the topic of partitioning, but unlike other tutorials, these are focused on developers. In the world of DevOps, developers now have to understand some of the physical design characteristics of partitioning. In this session, we'll have a look at a bigger picture when it comes to partition tables. All of the examples we've done so far have been tackling just a single table and how to partition that. But of course, our applications generally are not consisting of a single table. If I have a sales table, which is so large that I've decided I needed to partition it by years, for example, as you can see in the graphic, then what if I have a sales items table? If sales is large, then sales items, a child table linked by a foreign key, is probably going to be even larger because it's a one-to-many relationship. The sales items table will just have a foreign key, the sale ID pointing back to the sales table. If I want to partition that, that's a bit of a problem because the sales date, my partitioning range key, is only present on the sales table. If it's not on the sales item table, how do I partition on the sale date? That's where the concept of reference partitions comes into play. This is where you can reference a parent table from a child table in order to gain access to its partitioning key. Here's an example where I create a parent table and I'm going to partition by range on a date column. And I'll add a primary key, as I always would, to my parent table. If I wish to partition a child table, on that particular partitioning key that only belongs in the parent, I can use reference partitioning. I must include the constraint definition for the foreign key directly in the create table definition. I can't add it afterwards. That foreign key refers back to the parent, and then we use the syntax partition by reference and nominate the name of the constraint. If I now go ahead and insert some rows into my parent table, in this case, just the values one to 100 uh, added to sysdate, when I insert into my child table, we can go look at the values for user tab partitions for the table name of child. You can see, even though there was no explicit partitions created for our child table, it has been partitioned in the same way as the parent table. We've created some partitions and I've loaded some rows into the partitions for the child table. Whilst very, very useful, be aware that once you do reference partitioning in this way, you really have bonded those two tables together very, very tightly. If you want to truncate a parent partition, the child partition will be truncated as well. There are some other restrictions on reference partitions. Check the docs for full details. Thanks very much for watching. You can get the entire video series on partitioning from the playlist, or just head over to asktom.oracle.com slash partitioning for developers. And don't forget to keep it simply SQL. See you all soon.